Mningag was scared of Kukurahandi, plot's divisive constitutional coup. Zimbabwean President Emerson Mningagwa's strategy for a third term, practically a constitutional coup, is now gathering momentum and going full steam ahead after a brief retreat as the military regrouped soon after last year's general elections. ZANU-PF insiders say. The process of seeking a third term usually begins by testing the ground, as Mningagwa and his allies are currently doing, to see if the idea would be acceptable and then push it through especially when the elected president is in his or her second term. The third term issue is complex, yet has a high success rate in Africa. As at the end of 2020, as many as 24 sub-Saharan countries have made final attempts to change their constitutions through parliament. Four countries' amendments did not go through. These are Zambia under Frederick Chiluba in 2001, Malawi under Bikili Mulizi in 2002, Nigeria under Olushigun Obosanjo in 2006 and in Burkina Faso under Blaise Kompor in 2014. By contrast, 20 sitting presidents succeeded in their third term bid. So when the signs are positive, which Umningogwa thinks they are now, the party is mobilized to push the agenda and then a legislative instrument is prepared and fast-tracked through parliament for relevant constitutional amendments to be effected. ZANU-PF has been handed a two-thirds majority in the National Assembly lower house on a silver platter by the now-suspended self-imposed opposition CCC Secretary-General Sanjizo Chibangu. Even if it does not have a two-thirds in the Senate upper house, it has the capacity to mobilize it using a carrot and stick approach to sail through the bicameral legislature. Insiders say the third term move is back on track and is gaining traction under the new slogan 2030 VA Umningagwa Vanage for Chipo. Umningagwa will still be there in 2030. This week, the ruling ZANU PF Masvingo province intensified the campaign urging Umningagwa to extend his rule beyond his constitutional two terms as president of Zimbabwe. Party youths have been heightening the campaign of late. Amid choreographed sloganeering, cheers, whistling and allulations, Masvingo Provincial Chairperson Robson Mavanyengwa chanted the slogan 2030 VA Umningagwa Vanage Vachipo to huge and deafening applause from the crowd. The refrain is similar to what Umningagwa and his allies came up with in 2018 looking ahead to his second term, namely, Umningagwa 2023. ED 2023, fee. The 2023 strategy, which shocked the military command element that installed Umningagwa in power through a 2017 coup, was tested and rolled out starting at a ZANU-PF annual conference at Mzingwen High School, Esigadini, Matabili Land South Province, in December 2018. The current choreographed campaigns show Umningagwa himself and his political allies are behind the third term plot openly underway. More rallies will be held to campaign for a third term. During last year's elections, Umningagwa's ZANU PF allies pushed ED 2028, a political slogan similar to the one they came up with in 2018, saying ED 2023 urging him to go for a second term, only five months into his first elected term. The third term strategy has three phases, testing the waters, campaigns across provinces to gain popular backing and then the difficult part which is constitutional changes. Insiders say, the roadmap on that is full of pitfalls and hurdles. The third term agenda is back on track. The president had retreated briefly as the military advanced after the elections. The appointment of Lieutenant General Anselm Sanitui as the Zimbabwe National Army ZNA commander signaled the return of the army and Umningagwa's withdrawal as Vice President Constantino Chiwenga and the military gained momentum. A ZANU-PF official said. In December, it appeared Umningagwa's third term bed is dead in the water as Chiwenga tried to flex his political muscle especially during his wedding which was like a coronation or swearing-in ceremony. The president even indicated at the wedding that as his generation leaves the political stage, Chiwenga is the most tried and tested cadre to take over. However, 
After the festive season and his annual holidays during which the president reflected deeply on the issue, he came back rejuvenated to continue beyond 2028. Although part of his mind or heart tells him he must leave and allow Chiwenga to take over in 2028, the other part of his mind is saying it is not safe for him and his family to do so. Those around him, including the First Lady, are enjoying the fruits of power and don't want him to go. There are many reasons why Mningagwa would not want to leave in 2028, ranging from security. Money and protection, the Angolan experience is right in his mind. The ZANU-PF official related to the news hawks what he meant by the Angolan experience. In 2014, the late Angolan longtime president Jose Eduardo dos Santos, who died in 2022, four years after the end of his 38-year rule, replaced Candido Van Dunem as defense minister with Joao Lorenzo, former ruling MPLA secretary general. Van Dunem had held the post since 2010. Lorenzo, a retired general, ran the MPLA for five years until 2003 and then became first vice president of the National Assembly from 2003 to 2014. He later became defense minister in 2014 and later president 2017. A mixture of military and party links and experience in 2011 led him to be widely tipped as a possible successor to Dos Santos, who had kept everyone guessing about his succession plans for decades. But Dos Santos instead chose Manuel Vicente, a technocrat, former head of state oil firm Sanangal, as his running mate in a 2012 election, which the MPLA won easily. So when Dos Santos retired and passed on the baton to Lorenzo in 2017, it was assumed the former strongman and his family would be safe. However, Lorenzo did not waste time before going after Dos Santos' family. Isabel Dos Santos, the former president's daughter and Africa's richest woman worth three US dollars. Seven billion at her peak in 2014, lost practically everything. Between 2007 and 2010, at least 32 billion US dollars of oil revenue went missing from Treasury, according to the International Monetary Fund, which later tracked most of the money to quasi-fiscal operations. It was against this backdrop that his daughter, Isabel, became Africa's richest woman. Angolan prosecutors charged Isabel with 12 crimes. Accusing the fallen billionaire of causing state losses of around 219 million US dollar while she was head of state-owned oil company Sanangal. In a 46-page indictment, the prosecutors detailed allegations that Isabel and her cronies used offshore companies. Fraudulent invoices, forged documents and exorbitant salary raises to illegally pocket millions in 2016 and 2017. The criminal charges against her included money laundering, embezzlement and tax fraud. This is what Mningagwa fears the most, as an UPF official told the news hawks. He is less worried about Kukrahandi because even if he goes no one is clean on that among top officials. But it pricks his conscience, which is why he is trying to address it. The sweetness of power and worries about the Angolan experience as well as Gukura Handi and other human rights abusers are forcing Mningagwa to go for a complicated third term. But the army and the constitution stand in his way, insiders say. African leaders' failure to hand over power when their mandatory term of office is over is commonplace on the continent. Analysts say there are many reasons for this including addiction to power, abuse of state resources, human rights violations, fear of prosecution, lack of a strong opposition, absence of succession plan, and deliberate refusal to step down due to authoritarian and kleptocratic tendencies. But Humingagwa would need Napoleonic power to overcome those hurdles. Risking meeting his Waterloo. Presidential spokesperson George Karamba, a political ally of Chiwenga, has denied the president wants a third term, which fits the agenda of his handler. However, 
Sources say from the beginning Umningogwa admired and wanted to adopt Rwandan President Paul Kagame's model, including staying on for a third term. The British, who supported the 2017 coup which brought him to power, wanted Umningogwa to be a Kagame to fix Zimbabwe which is badly broken politically and economically. Kagame won a third term in 2017 amid protests by critics, accusing him of running an authoritarian project. His supporters point to the country's phenomenal economic growth and development to blunt that criticism. The third term bid is even more appealing to Umningogwa as he looks east. Those close to him say. Chinese leader Xi Jinping, whom he admires, was handed an unprecedented third term as president last year, capping an ascent in which he has become China's most powerful leader in generations since Mao Zedong. However, the army is willing to take him head on if he insists, the sources say. To ensure a third term, Umningogwa had put his ducks in a row through the controversial recent general elections he won by fair means or foul using the shadowy securocratic forever associate Zimbabwe FARS, not the military, and subsequent appointments of family, friends and cronies into critical positions to control the levers of state power. Before the recent elections, the sources say, there was a strong move by Umningogwa to get rid of the army to win the polls through FARS without risking internal sabotage by the military. The military was not just removed from the electoral process, but also from running key government ministries and departments, particularly the Ministry of Defense itself. For instance, to get a grip on Defense House, Umningogwa removed Permanent Secretary Gray Marongwi and deployed his trusted ally Aaron Hepera, a former Central Intelligence Organization CIO Deputy Director General. Hepera acted as CIO Director General after retired Major General Hapitan Bonyang was appointed Justice Minister by the late former President Robert Mugabe in 2017 in the twilight zone of his rule, last days of his reign. After that, Hepera was appointed Home Affairs Permanent Secretary before being moved to defense where he swiftly moved to purge military deployees there as part of coup proofing and paving way for a possible but complicated third term. However, the road to a third term would be complicated for Umningogwa. He would need to make constitutional changes to extend his presidency beyond two terms. He would require not just a two-thirds in parliament, but also a popular majority through a referendum as well. Section 91 of Zimbabwe's new constitution, which came into effect in 2013, limits a president's tenure in office to two five-year terms. Section 91 2 reads, a person is disqualified for election as president or vice president if he or she has already held office as president under this constitution for two terms. Whether continuous or not, and for the purpose of this subsection three or more year service is deemed to be a full term. Having been first controversially elected in 2018 before his disputed re-election last year in August, Umningagwa would be ineligible to stand in the 2028 elections unless he comes up with a constitutional overhaul. The situation is complicated because even if ZANU-PF, which now has an engineered two-thirds parliamentary majority in the National Assembly, courtesy to Chibangu's disruption of the opposition CCC. But not in the Senate, manages to change the constitution, it still has to overcome the disincentive that such a change should not benefit the incumbent, a Herculean task. Please like, comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.